Before we start today's video, I need to make a little correction to the end of last video. When I said that the 100% time for Combat Patrol was 3 minutes, I was actually wrong about that. Thanks again to Master Knight DH for clarifying and helping fix the issue. The correct time for that is actually 5 minutes, so you get a little bit more leeway. Before Battalion Wars was known as, well, Battalion Wars, it went by a different name, style, and build. That of course being Advanced Wars Under Fire. Yep, the spin-off game was still going to carry the Advanced Wars title going into it, and the purpose of this LP is to bring to light the numerous changes, art style shifts, and lost content going into this game. So first, let's go into probably the most obvious change, the troops and tanks. Runs in the Underfire build were definitely a lot more buff with the stricter move cycle, although that's probably due to it being a very early build of the game. They more resembled how the veteran class do in Battalion Wars instead of being entirely different design-wise like how they are in the final build of the game, with the only way to differentiate the different troop types is by their title, their weapon, and their helmets. Grunts or riflemen had standard helmets, bazookas were wearing no helmets at all, missiles had a targeting visor, flame troops wore red helmets, and uh, heavy gun troopers wore reinforced helmets. Tanks and other vehicles also looked vastly different than they do in the Battalion Wars build, with the most notable being the tanks and gunships, looking like something right out of G.I. Joe. They also didn't come pre-crewed like they do in this game, making you have to jump into them yourself to pilot them, and weren't limited to grunts being the only pilots of the vehicles, letting other trooper classes take control or man gunner positions. One last thing to note is that T-Copters in the Underfire build were not only going to be flyable, but also pack some heavy armaments for defense, so that's something. Also, one last thing to note. Even though they looked a lot different than they did in Battalion Wars, they still shared the goofy, high-pitched voices that the grunts in this game do, so I figured that was just a very funny thing just to note about the old troops. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Battalion Wars! Last time, we went on patrol for the Western Frontier in Combat Patrol, and we discovered that the Tundering Territories, more specifically Sargorki's uh, private army, has decided to invade the Frontier Territory. So, it's time for us to head behind enemy lines to take the fight to him, and hopefully nip this problem in the bud before it uh, spirals out of control. Bravo Company has been encircled by Tundran Advance. Fight your way through... Uh, back through the hostile territory, liberate captive frontier forces in the encounter, and put a dent in the enemy battle lines on your way out. General Herman here, Commander. Do you copy? Here's the bad news. Tsar Gorgi's launched an all-out attack. Which means our position is now behind enemy lines. But here's the good news. You're gonna join forces with the boys from Bravo Company. We'll see if we can't get us a piece of the action. Bravo Company's been airdropped just north of your position. Head for the Gold Star, Commander. I'm wondering, did something hey, happen with Bravo Company? I guess it was maybe like a forward observer or something, because I definitely saw like a grunt already standing in front of where the air transport dropped off. Alright, fine, whatever. Come on, boys. Let's get a move on. Gonna catch those Tundrans by surprise. They won't know what hit them. It's that pesky spy again. Take him out before he can report back to the Nailed him. And it looks like you left a meta pack behind. You can grab these for yourself, otherwise your grunts will pick them up as necessary. Gotta make sure no evidence that he was even here you to begin with. You may have eliminated my spy, General, but his comrades are thirsty for revenge. Uh, 
Come on, boys. Keep an eye out. They could be popping out at any minute. Like right about now. Press and hold the L button. Move and press the B button. You can execute combat roll. Nice shooting, son. But let's keep moving. There's gonna be plenty more where they can. anything? From. No, you're actually taking no damage. All right then. Let's get a move on then. Looks like a small enemy camp. Press the plus control pad to enter global mode and get a better view of the battlefield. All right, boys, waste them. The enemy's in cover, Commander. Try to flank him on the right. Get it? Even when the enemy's in cover, they're vulnerable when you attack from the side or from behind. So what you're saying is it's always good to take him from behind. Got it. Wait. Go, go, go! And yet still, none of them have taken even a shred of damage. Hmm. Well, the gate seems impassable, even though we got these really powerful guns, so I guess we're going to need to go up and over. Cowboys are approaching our position. Cross the rope bridge and destroy them. Not on my watch. See the zero one one marker? That means the MG nest up ahead is empty. Get over there and press the B button to jump in. All right, boys, take them out. Just aim and fire. These MG nests are pretty darn powerful, so make good use of them. That grunt is definitely taking his fair share of damage. The bridge is ours, Commander. Ooh, Say he's again. almost the dead. Wow. Is ours. Yeah, you might want to get some health. Maybe. So another one took some. Yeah, it looks like two took some significant damage. Well, don't worry. So long as I'm a pretty decent commander, I should be able to take care of my voice, no problem. Find the mission log using the L and R buttons. That would be nice if this game was long enough that I would forget what I need to do for the mission logs. Those thundered bullets sting a little bit, huh? Use those fallen logs as cover, Commander. I could do that, or I could just be an expert at dodgeballing and just get out of the way of those bullets. And then riddle them with bullets. Alright, come on, boys. Anybody need some health? One does. Nope, guess not. All right, everybody's good. Let's get a move on. Just sneak our way right around behind their lines. They won't know what hit them. Ten, Commander. I'm gonna call in some air support and soften them up a little. An airstrike, General. Are you afraid to engage my troops on even terms? I was about to say, Frontier Command better have sent some fighters to take care of the fighter that was patrolling the area. Otherwise, that bomber was not going to uh, be very helpful. It looks like the fighters took care of the Tundra fighter. Alright, come on, boys. Oh, well, someone just got shot down. Now that's what I call a firefight. But we don't got time to stand around and enjoy the scenery. I'm gonna guess that was probably our bomber. Or maybe that was a Tundra fighter. I don't know, but somebody got shot down out of the sky. Let's roll out the welcome wagon, Commander. That poor guy, I kinda feel bad for him. What do you mean it has to be so cold? It's not even that cold. Look, do you see snow anywhere, buddy? Then See, the I mean, I guess I, it would be a little chilly being in, like, a, running, a force like this. Well, there's a Frontier Fighter up there. Maybe our bomber still survived? Maybe it's just out of range? Actually, you know what? I'm curious. There's a fighter. There's a fighter. There's something over there. I'm going to guess that's probably our bomber. So, yeah, that was the hey, Tundra Fighter that got shot that down. The MG towers and the supplies base are clear and present danger. To your nope, infantry. nope, nope, nope. Only you guys stay behind. Take them down. Keep your infantry on this are they side really trying the to shoot down my fight? All right, fine, button, whatever. Put them in sentry mode. Just going to hang back for a bit, boys. Let me just clear out these towers real quick, and then you can come join the party. Usually when in... Like, either an enemy emplacement or vehicle is smoking that hard, that's usually an indicator that it is basically done for. 
it'll slowly start taking damage until it officially gets destroyed. So you, if you see it smoking like that, then usually that's a good sign that you can just ignore it for a bit. Unless it's straight up attacking your units. Not so fast, Herman. This battle is far from won. Bazooka veterans, destroy that tank! Uh oh, here come the bazookas. Guys, seriously, I am stuck here. Why are you crawling under the treads? Your tank is in pretty bad shape, Commander. If you want to patch her up, grab one of those blue Jerry things. Alright, doing pretty good, boys. We only lost, looks like, one trooper. Yeah. Only lost one grunt. But the Tundrans have definitely lost a lot more than just Keep one. Up the good work, son. We're close to winning this thing. I actually thought that explosion was going to be enough to kill the rest of my battalion. Speaking of the rest of the battalion, no, they're doing pretty good. All right, cool. Let's just finish out the recon squad, and we are done here. Outstanding! Don't you just love the smell of victory in the morning? Enjoy your petty triumph, General. This battle has only strengthened my resolve to crush the frontier once and for all. And with that, S rank technique, while we did lose that one grunt, that was enough to knock it out of the 100%. Speed was 88%, which was still pretty decent. Up in the corner, you will see the speed requirement for the 100%. Power, 100% as well. And total time, or total percentage of it is uh, 95%. So speed and technique can dinged us too much. We definitely would have been able to easily 100% uh, the total. All right, folks. With that, that is going to do it for today's video. We're going to take a look at the Frontier Light Tank, though. The crew of two, speed rating of three, two weapons, and an armor rating of three. It's role as anti-infantry and vulnerable to rockets and aircraft. The Herman Mark V is the standard battle tank of the Western Frontier. This latest iteration sees it armed with a single 100mm cannon and a short-range HMG. Despite its mobility, light armor makes this tank vulnerable to bazooka ambush. And as you could see, we actually got pretty dinged up by that Bazooka Vet ambush at the very end of the level. We also got an introductory to the transport copter. With a crew of 6, a speed rating of 2, 2 weapons on it, and an armor rating of 4, its role is being a troop and vehicle carrier. This rapid insertion C-Type Samson transports Western Frontier infantry and vehicles in and out of hotspots across the globe. Although lacking in significant offensive capability, the seven berth Samson is thickly armored and can soak up a lot of punishment. Anyways, next time on Battalion Wars, we're gonna go under command of one of my all-time favorite CEOs in this entire series and help take part in the defense of an assault on Windbreak Ridge. See you guys next time. Later.